So hello and welcome to this video on EAS, a multi-channel logic module from Instruo. Now this will be an in-depth demo of the module, but also a musical and creative look and tutorial on logic functions and their use in a modular synth system. So let's check out what's to come. And up front, I'd like to thank Instruo for sponsoring this video. Logic functions were originally used to create Boolean functions in early computation and electronics devices. They would take a binary input, a signal that is on or off, not variable in any way, can only exist in those two states, perform a function and give a binary output. And with music synthesis, we can creatively bend and twist these functions for anything from interesting musical rhythms, unique audio processing, and more advanced patch-based problem solving. Instruo say that EAS is the be-all and end-all of logic modules. So let's head up north across the border to Scotland to hear from Instruo head honcho Jason Lim to tell us about the module. Put boring signals in, you'll get more interesting signals out. Now logic can be a scary thing that doesn't immediately scream musicality. It's not on the surface level of most software or hardware that we'd use. But don't run for the hills, because this video aims to demystify these potential alien concepts, making them simpler to understand from a beginner level, and then take us through some musical and creative use cases as well. And so we're familiar with EAS, let's run down the module. And the graphics on the module are standard practice common symbols for these logic types. We have an AND, and it's opposing NAND, an OR gate, and the opposing NOR gate, an XOR gate and the opposing XNOR gate, and a NOT gate. And you can use all seven outputs simultaneously, and there's also some clever input and output normalizations, meaning if you don't patch something in, things are connected within the circuit, which gives us more immediacy and more varied signals from less input signals. And we're going to get into a beginner-friendly look at what these logic gates and functions are. But first and foremost, let's just throw caution to the wind, patch some basic signals in, and get some interesting signals out. And I'd encourage anyone else getting into logic to do exactly that with their first logic module and your first patches. So let's get stuck in. So before we get into anything else, here's why logic is cool. Everything in this beat, except the kick and snare, six different rhythms is coming from EAS, the logic module here. We have a times one clock or quarter notes, times two or eighth notes, and a times four or sixteenth notes. Three simple, steady clock sources, six nice rhythms coming out. Let's hear it in a beat. So I'll remove the kick and snare generated elsewhere. Here they are in isolation. These green cables are giving me two nice rhythms bouncing off each other. Here's one of them panned hard left. And the other panned hard right. Up top we have this on, off or closed open hi-hat. We can see my cowbell like sound trigger in there. And my low tom like sound. So all these rhythms from simple sources that's why logic is great. However you want to apply that in your system, without knowing anything, patch some simple things in, get some interesting related things out. Of course we're going to go through what all of these logic functions are, but I just wanted to start with, don't run for the hills over logic, it can just do cool stuff by patching signals in. So we've seen how just plugging into a logic module can result in loads of interesting, musical, nice things to have in a modular system. And there's lots more patches in this video showing a wide range of uses for a logic module and a Boolean logic gate. But what is logic? And let's get a bit of understanding to kind of back up the patches in this video. Logic deals in a binary fashion. 
signals are either high or they're low. These are often referred to as active or not active, or ones and zeros. Logic types have what's called a truth table, showing what will happen when a high signal is at any given input with that logic gate type and how that will affect and give us an output. So we'll go through each logic type and show how that responds. To back up this whole patch, I have this sound, a kick drum. And then the green trace here is a hi-hat panned hard left. And I'll patch that into input one of the and. And hard right, this little noise hit is the blue trace on data. So hard left and right, you can hear my input signals. Green, 16th note clock to the left. Blue, eighth note clock to the right. And the bass drum's there just to help hear what's going on as well. Muting those, I have a simple sound. And that's going to audibly show us this output. It's also the yellow trace there on data. Gate lengths are important here. If these were triggers, this would act differently. And you can see in here, there is a sustain that is longer on certain outputs. So I'm patched up so you can hear this sustain and what the output is doing. Now adding in all my backing sounds, this is an AND gate, where two inputs give an active output when both signals are high, both signals are on or considered to be a one on this truth table. In NAND is the opposite. It gives a signal when anything but two signals are active together. So if just one of these inputs is high or they're not high, you can see it occupies all the spaces when these two input signals, green and blue, don't line up. All logic is high whenever anything is high. So a single input will pass through. Or because these overlapping gates create a sustain, everywhere but that little gap where neither input is on gives an output. A nor will give me a, the opposite output, an output when nothing is high, nothing is on at the two inputs. So you can see there's only that tiny space where neither of these clocks is active that gives me an output. So XOR logic is exclusive logic, and that's different to normal OR logic in that it's exclusively one input or the other. Unlike OR logic, where any input will be high, this isn't actually active where both of these inputs are together, only when one of them is. And XNOR logic is the opposite. So this will be active when both of them line up together, because that wouldn't happen on the XOR, and also when none of them are active. And the NOT gate is like an inverted version where it's the opposite of what's coming in. So you can see my green input there is those spaces when that's not playing. If I was to use the blue input, I end up playing an offbeat because I'm playing off of that blue input. So that's a quick look at logic types and what they do. There's lots of patches showing how to use this. So grab a brew and let's dive in to some musical, creative, interesting uses of logic. So here I'm turning clocks into melodies. I have three clocks, a times one, times two, and times three. I'm taking three outputs, mixing them at an even level in a simple Unity mixer, and then using this to drive a modular patch. So simply moving a single cable will start to change the sequence, this melodic pattern. to be had from just three clocks coming in, mixing three outputs and making my own sequences, my own melodic patterns. for three different things. 
and based bass accents, or based rhythmic chopping, and not based offbeat hi-hats. Now pull this back and we'll start with the kick and this offbeat hi-hat. So here's my kick and hi-hat pattern. The kick is playing quarter notes and using the not, basically when this isn't active, I'm getting my offbeat hi-hat. On this top channel, the and bass logic, blue trace is playing hi-hat panned hard left, green trace is playing the sound panned hard right. And these are just 16th note gates, but with random probabilities, so they're not firing all the time. And it's chance based, it's probability, I don't know when they're going to hit together. But when they do hit together, the AND gates will go high. And I'm using that, which is a yellow trace and yellow cable, to trigger my kind of folded filtered bass sound. And the final part of this patch is some R based logic and it's chopping up this rhythm. If I was to take this one out, we can see a quarter note clock pulsing all the time. And this is being chopped up because it's holding the gate high while this one is high. So if this wasn't a triggered sound in my patch, it was a sustaining one, we would get da da ba ba long sustaining notes. But as this is percussive, it's chopping the rhythm up nicely. So this is just a quick patch using Logic to pull out interesting shifting rhythms from unsynced LFOs, in this case, Oct. Two LFOs go into the EAS, all gate for now, and these are creating the rhythms used in this patch. As I start to change outputs, that's a single LFO just turned into a pulse. getting breaks in the rhythm. Weird shuffling clocks, weird kind of ramping rhythms. So just unsynced LFOs into the logic and using that to drive the rhythms in a patch. So here we're going to use the XOR logic on EAS as square wave CMOS based ring modulation. We can get super destructive square wave sounds. Let's just play around first. It can also be incredibly musical. Green trace is Neoni, blue trace is TSL. These are coming into the logic. Yellow trace is my output and being filtered with some effects. Now losing the sequence and losing my effects, anything we put into EAS will be turned to a square wave. One note on that, which is nice with Neoni or wave folders, if we plug in a wave folded sound, the peaks that are created on the wave folding will be turned to pulses too. Same for the modulation, if I go for say sine wave, it's just turned to a pulse. Now let's play around and find some nice tunings of these now two signs that we're XR ring modulating. Let's fold this wave. Because AND logic will only give an output when both of its inputs are high, we can use that as a pulse synchronizer, a timing quantizer of sorts. So I'm using this yellow trace here on data, which is a simple clock and an audible metronome for this patch, and a manual gate there, and you can see no matter how frantically and out of time I tap that button, it will only let an output through 
when it lines up with that clock signal. This works really well for pulling in odd sources, unsynced modulation or LFOs. It works really well with random gates or noise you may put through a comparator to try and get that to give some random timing. So as an extension of the pulse syncing with and based logic, here we're going to use that to create drum fills. I have a drum fill, which is the yellow cables and the yellow trace on the scope. And if I was to just let that come through all the time, you can hear that triggering some sounds. Now I'm using Tane here as a manual gate, like I was earlier, blue trace, blue cable. And by turning this on and off, I can let through my drum fill manually with a button press. It's a nice performative tool. So here it is. So because EAS, as we've seen with the ring modulation section in this video, will just turn anything we put in into square waves, I wondered what a little bit of guitar would be like. And it's a most wonderful, nasty, gated fuzz. Let's check it out. So it sustains like mad and turns the guitar into this long held fuzzy drone that kind of just farts out and gates out at the end to silence. So here's a really simple use case for logic, but one of the reasons why having it around is so good, and that is simply merging or mixing gates and triggers. Now I have a trigger, the green trace here on data, coming into the R logic and coming out. This is triggering an envelope that's doing all the heavy lifting in this patch. So with a simple trigger, it's really basic. But by adding in, and I remove it from ES, add it to the scope, adding a longer gate gives me this kind of push and pull, this rhythmic interplay, and some nice sustaining envelope moments in an otherwise triggered simple warring envelope. So here it is. Constant clocked triggers, the green trace, nice held gates, and now a varied gate and trigger stream for my ADSR. Holy sh This is crazy. Check this out. After playing around with the gated fuzz effect on guitar, and there's multiple channels here, I thought, what would stereo be like? What would a drum loop be like? And here that is, the drum loop dry, nothing to do with EAS. Doing this in parallel, where we blend some of this really full on distortion with the dry sound is really nice production technique. If this is a bit too full on, but you're into some head banging and you want some fuzz on your beats. So here's the dry sound, and I'll blend in some of this fuzzy logic pulsed sound. All that kind of sound pressure and manicness of this fuzz but with some clarity and some of those transients and top end hi-hats back in from the dry sound blended in my mixer. So as EAS's logic channels turn things into pulses, if we have an oscillator that say doesn't have PWM, like Neoni, but we can animate a waveform, we can use the animation, turn it into a pulse and get PWM like effects. This saw wave giving us PWM. Now let's hear that in context of a patch. So this is now a sequence to Neoni, the animated saw into EAS. EAS giving me this PWM based on the animation of the saw into a VCA of an envelope, really simple. So 
So here I'm using all of EAS to create these unique layers and textures, quite scattered, interesting, sonic little textures to go within a beat. And let's hear it against some more standard sounds and rhythms. It's creating this nice kind of textural beat thing that adds a lot compared to the basic rhythm. If I take it all out, it's a really simple beat. So let's hear them all individually. So here I'm using Not for this open hi-hat, some exclusive logic there, some XR to give me this little galloping rhythm. And playing a quarter note against the 16th, I've got this kind of double 16 hit and then gap. And the all logic, the green trace, giving me these noise hits. And all together, they're giving us these unique patterns. And this is all derived from basic gate sources, you know, quarter notes, sixteens, eighth notes, divide one, two, three, four, and so on. There's nothing complex in the rhythms that are going into the logic, the complexity is coming out of the logic. Logic is a fantastic problem solver for a modular patch. And we're going to do two things in this patch. We're going to chain multiple logic gates in series. And we're also going to roll our own and logic with a VCA because I'm going to run out of and logic channels as I need more than one. This is a little bit longer as there's multiple things and it's a bit more complex. So do grab a brew and strap in. Now the problem I want to solve is rather simple. I don't want my bass this squelchy filtered sound to play when my kick drum plays. But it's not as simple as that may seem and some non-solutions, some no-go ideas would be to sidechain compress my bass. There are two reasons I don't want to do that. One, I don't want any audible ducking and compression artifacts. And two, you don't always have a compressor to hand. You may think we could use XR logic but if the gate lengths of your rhythms don't line up, the gate sources or triggers for your different parts of the patch, you can end up with some patterns that don't quite work. You could also think that we could sequence around the kick drum, simply sequencing a bass pattern that plays when the bass doesn't. However, my kick drum merges a steady rhythm with a random gate, which is a nice musical way to get variation, where random and repetition kind of live in harmony musically. But because of the random, I can't sequence around it. I don't know exactly where every kick's going to hit. And again, I don't want sidechain pumping and artifacts. And the solution was to use not logic chained into and logic. On data, the yellow trace there is my kick rhythm. And the blue trace is the not output. And you can see that the blue trace, the not is high when the kick drum isn't. And if I had an AND gate free, which I don't because it's doing something else in this patch, I would use this into the AND gate and my bass rhythm into the AND gate and all the gates and triggers for my squelchy bass that aren't playing when the kick plays would be let through my AND logic. So here's how we're going to roll our own. I'm going to take this NOT logic and have that open a VCA. It's going into the CV control on the VCA. I then have my triggers, my 16th notes for my bass line, coming into the VCA, and because the VCA is closing when the kick hits, all the in-between triggers play. And as you can hear, that solves my problem. This is more like hi-hats choking on and off on a drum machine than sidechain compression. The bass simply doesn't play if the kick drum does. So that's it for this video on EAS. I hope that's provided you with lots of examples with the module and also inspired you to use Logic and get patching with it in your own systems. 
If you are a Patreon supporter, a bonus PDF outlining one of these patches and an extended part of this video will be available on Patreon soon. You can support me and join my amazing Discord community at the link in the description. Cheers for watching, leave a comment, we'll chat away down there with any questions, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, bye.